Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our CAT Lab at the Pilar Hospital in Curitiba, Brazil. Thank you so much, Alain, for the opportunity to show TAVI cases from South America. Let me introduce you to our team, Enio Guerrius and Andrea Dunch. Enio is an interventional cardiologist, and Andrea is our cardiovascular surgeon. Also helping us, our anesthetist Denise Rossi, Daniela from Boston Scientific, and our nurses Gilberto and Tiago. So let's move to our case. Our patient today is a 79-year-old lady who presented with progressive dyspnea, being now in New York Heart Association Functional Class 2 to 3. She's hypertensive and has a previous history of breast cancer. Her echocardiogram shows a left ventricular ejection fraction of 69% and a archival area of 0.8 cm square and a mean gradient of 41 mm of mercury. Her ECG shows sinus rhythm and no conduction disturbances. The CT scan shows a small aortic annulus with an area of 370 mm square, a mean diameter of 22 mm and a perimeter of 69 mm. The distance of the coronary arteries to the aortic annulus plane is good, with 13 mm for the left and 11 mm for the right. As you can appreciate here, on the left-hand side, the valve is not very calcified. The SOV has a mean diameter of 27 mm. The STJ also uh, has 27 mm of diameter and she has a moderate dilatation of the ascending aorta. Here's our working views. The arterial axes are pretty straight with no calcifications and a minimal luminal diameter of 7 mm in both sides. The valve we are going to be using today is the Boston Scientific Accurate Neo 2, which comes in three sizes, covering diameters from 21 to 27. So for our patient, we've chosen a 23 mm valve, size small. The Accurate Neo 2 is a self-expandable valve made of a nitinol frame with porcine pericardial leaflets and a supraannular configuration. The stabilization arches uh, provide self-alignment during the positioning. The upper crown not only provides supraannular anchoring, but also helps to push the native leaflets down, which is a very interesting feature, especially in cases with uh, low origin of the coronary arteries. The bottom part of the new tool has also an external skirt, which helps uh, prevent paravalvular leaks. The 14 French ice leaf for me is one of the best expandable introducers. Uh, it's very hydrophilic with an excellent hemostasis valve. The delivery system's proximal handle consists in two rotating knobs. The first opens the top part of the valve and the second releases the bottom part after the removal of the safety button. So the plane is using the right femoral artery for the main axis. The right femoral vein uh, will have only a short 0.35 wire for pacing. We are using the right um, radial artery for the pigtail. As per protocol, pre-dilatation is mandatory, so we are going to use a 20 mm balloon for it. And as already mentioned, we are using a small valve, size small, using also the technique for commercial alignment. So as planned, we begin with the puncture of the right radial artery and the placement of a six French sheath. Then a uh, pigtail catheter is advanced to the descending aorta in order to do an angiogram with roadmap, which will help us uh, with the femoral puncture. So here, guided by roadmap, the puncture is done at the level of the common femoral artery above its bifurcation. So here you see the advancement of the guide wire. And after the placement of an eighth French sheath in the femoral artery, we proceed to the puncture of the femoral vein. And uh, instead of installing a sheath, uh, we place a short 035 guide wire, uh, which will be secured with the clamp. 
and uh, that guide wire will be used as the positive tip of the pacemaker's cable. And in case of need, we can quickly install a five French sheath and uh, advance a pacemaker lead. After that, we preload uh, two preclosed devices. So uh, you advance the device until you see a blood jet on the side tube. Remove the guide wire and lift the lever, which will open the foot. Retract the device and depress the plunger to deploy the needles. Pull back the plunger and cut the thread. Now lower the lever to close the foot and pull back the device until you see the threads. Remove the suture limbs and secure them with a clamp. Keep pulling it back until you see the two white arrows where the guide wire will be reinserted. And then you remove the device and install the second one. Here you can appreciate the accurate NEO2 valve being pulled out from the jar. It will be rinsed and mounted on the delivery system. Now, an extra stiff guide wire is being inserted uh, to allow safe advancement of the 14 French eye sleeve introducer. So, uh, now we have the large sheath, uh, which must be advanced in the forward motion without rotation and after its placement, it must be secured with a suture so that it won't move during balloon and delivery system manipulation. Next, the pigtail catheter is positioned in the ascending aorta at the level of the non-coronary sinus, and an angiogram is performed to make sure that the tricusp uh, coplanar view is adequate. As the aortic angiogram looks good, now we proceed to the crossing of the aortic valve. Here we have chosen an AL1 catheter uh, and a 035 straight tip guide wire. The aortic valve is crossed and the AL1 uh, catheter is advanced using the RAO view. Uh, the AL1 catheter is now exchanged by a pigtail catheter and the aortic gradient is measured. Now, an extra small safari guide wire is advanced and accommodated at the apex of the left ventricle. Next step now is the predilatation, which will be performed with a 20 mm balloon catheter. Rapid basis starts. We wait for the blood pressure to go down and the balloon is inflated and deflated. And uh, here you see the pressure recover after we stop the pacing. Now we are ready to advance the valve delivery system. To obtain commissure alignment, the system must be inserted with the flush port facing down at six o'clock. Uh, and here you see the system is advanced until the nose cone crosses the native uh, valve. And after that, it's time to check the valve post for the alignment. I hope you can see here the three posts are almost aligned in the tricusp coplanar view, but we have just to slightly rotate clockwise to obtain the alignment. What you want to see is the three posts aligned side by side with the free stand struts, which corresponds to the commissure of the prosthesis, visible on the left and right sides, as you see in this picture. Then you go to the cusp overlap view, which we are going to show next. It's the REO caudal. And what you want to see is one post alone on the right and two posts overlapping on the left side of your screen. The free stand strut must always be very evident on the right. If it's on the left side here, you have to turn the system 180 degrees to correct it. 
Now we advance the valve until the central mark is at the level of the aortic annulus. At this point, it's always better to keep the valve slightly higher as the less movement of the system must be forward. Now we do an angiogram to check positioning and then starting, we start rotating the knob one clockwise, uh, counterclockwise, sorry. So uh, we release the upper crown as you see here. Now we check the positioning with another angiogram. It looks nice. So we proceed to the release of the arches by rotating the knob one up until the end. At this point, the valve can still be moved. So we do one last angiogram to check the position before releasing the lower crown. The patient is very stable. So uh, here you see the angiogram, the positioning looks good. So we remove the safety button and in a quick movement by rotating the knob two, the valve is released while the first operator keeps a forward tension. Here you go. Now that the valve is implanted, it's time to centralize the nose cone by pulling back the guide wire while pulling back the system, always making sure that it's not catching some part of the valve on its way out. The delivery system now is pulled back to the descending aorta, and in order to put the system back together, we rotate clockwise the knob two for the distal part, as you can see here, the nose cone coming backwards. And then the knob one for the, pro for the pro proximal part. And now it's safe to take the system out of the body. As you can see here, the alignment looks nice with the three, with the three poles fairly aligned on the tricusp coplanar view. And uh, when you rotate to the cusp overlap view, it's also nice to see that we have one pose to the right and two to the left as intended. Now it's time for the final angiogram. And here you can appreciate the result, which looks very good with a trace of AI. The two coronary arteries are patent with good flow and the position of the valve looks fine. Also, there's no change on the ECG and the QRS remains very narrow. That's it. I think it's a nice result. We are very happy. That's it. I think it was a nice demonstration of how easy it is to implant this valve and also how precise can be the commercial alignment with the Accurate Neo 2 valve. I'd like to thank this wonderful team and thank you all for your attention and wish you a very nice afternoon. Bye.